child is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, you know, the star of American theatre. And he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. Why don't you stay with Mrs Hudson? Oh, but Miss Caitlin has more in common with Miss Alice, and they get along so well. Guess what, Mrs Hudson? Mr Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will... Brains. Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming. <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> Come on, Toby. Your soap bath couldn't have been as bad as that. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. My archive. I can always consult with it if needed. It would be better to examine Wilde's belongings before he returns. Ah, oh, Wilde's already making himself at home. Wilde truly has a perfect disguise kit. Do actors really need all this? This must be grease paint. <laughs> oh, face powder of an excellent quality. I use the same brushes for makeup. I forgot my hat. Father? I'm just checking, um. You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it uh, might be. Uh, Practicing my disguises, you know me. No, don't, don't touch that! No, no! Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? 
Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared. And my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes, although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters' Ball. Mr. Windybank did not wish for me a mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together, but then Father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, Father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until Father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha! A love letter! Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr...? Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her. This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. Good quality paper, quite smooth. Fairly common ink, nothing special. I'm waiting for the moment when your stepfather leaves once more. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. Let's study this letter more closely.
There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. The stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. Fairly common ink, nothing special. Mm, I hope that you'll be an obedient girl. Mm, take my advice, stay at home. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. This letter has a defect. One more letter with a defect. One more letter with a defect. Ah, there's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. Another letter match with the same defects. One more letter with a defect. Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter.
You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away. To bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes, you could have been more diplomatic. What is going on? Mr. Holmes, is everything all right? Oh my God. Go back to your flat. Calm down, Toby. Now. It's ticking. It's ticking. It's ticking. I see wires inside. It could be connected to the cover. A fancy ticking homemade gift from the secret admirer. I have two minutes to defuse it. A source of electricity for the detonation. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode. A package with explosive material. There are wires going in and out. It's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside.
What happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? Mr. Holmes, are you all right? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five five with black hair and a hair lip. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. J.T. are the owner's initials. Let's see what's inside. There could be a hidden message that's been written with some lemon juice. No, don't touch anything else. There are ink stains on this piece of paper. I could read the text with the help of my analysis table if Wilde hadn't already destroyed it. A poem. But what does it mean? This isn't a poem. It's a song called Rally Mohawks. That great moment when America rebelled against England's dominance. Then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. And I bet they hoisted a tankard of ale and invented a new nation. Along with deciding if this was the week they got to dump some tea into Yon Harbor. <laughs> Why ever did he keep such a song in his pocket? Here it is. That's all I can do for now. Let's try and get a few hours of sleep. How can you sleep when there is someone trying to kill me? How selfish. <laughs> He's so funny. Did you sleep well, Kate? Very well, thank you, Father. Is that wild? Whatever is he doing now? He's transforming you into a legend. Oh, silly man. Kate, what's the matter? Well, I just came by to tell you that I'm going to the zoo with Alice. We'll be having lunch in town. 
The zoo. What on earth for? Uh, perhaps because it is my birthday today? I'm so sorry, Kate. With Wilde's visit, I... Look, here's some spending money. Go and treat yourself to a... a thing. All right. I'll go then. Kate. You never do anything right. All right, all right. Come here. I've had enough of you not caring about me. I do care. I've just had a, a difficult night. Yes. Alice told me about the bomb, but you wouldn't. Kate, I... I only want to protect you. You don't understand anything. I wish Alice would adopt me. Don't be ridiculous. I don't know why my parents entrusted me to you. Did they really know you? Kate, come back. Damn it. Such a waste. This Alice, I have an odd sense about her. It's as if she's playing with Kate's feelings. This would be a good opportunity to investigate Alice's flat while they're absent. And anyway, it'll be better. It appears that Alice sleeps in this armchair, as uncomfortable as that must be. It has no smell. Uh, it has a bitter taste. No smell, a bit of taste. It's a tincture of barbiturate. A soothing drug to aid sleep. Alice prepared a gift for Kate. She remembered her birthday. Well, women are good at that sort of thing. Alice has recently used this. It looks as though Alice has not slept here for a long time.
Alice's childhood was spent with her aunt, until the aunt's death. Alice was unhappy with all of her adopted families. She's spying on me. A phonograph cylinder. Strange taste in literature. Her full name is Alice Floella Hamilton. Sarah de Bouvier is Alice's mother. Alice used her mother's name to lease the flat. Kate probably sleeps here. This lock is quite new. <sighs> oh my God. The wheelchair is the same as the one in the photograph above. My word, look at this setup. Alice practices spiritualism. Abraham Lincoln. distant ancestor, Horace Verney. William Hamilton. But I know him. He was a bandit who I arrested 20 years ago. Alice is talking with her father, William Hamilton.
Alice knows about Zacharias Greystoke, the victim from the bowling club. I solved that crime. Charles Darwin, English naturalist and geologist. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. I finished here, time to go. It's closed. My, I see you and Kate are best friends already. I have to be careful in this den of iniquity. Come on, Bobby, push back! Hey you, shut up! Well done, Top Bobby! Top Adam! I put a penny on Adam winning. Bobby! I should be quiet so that I can listen to what people are saying. Let's celebrate! <laughs> It's an illegal gambling den in 
I drink to forget that I drink. <laughs> Sod off. Bones up. Scotland Yard dogs! Nothing for you. Interesting, they have some kind of pass for getting inside. Cheers! Who's up? I need a refill! Let's celebrate! <laughs> Celebrate! <laughs> Cheers! Bottoms up. Let's celebrate! <laughs> Want a beer? I drink to forget that I drink. <laughs> Bottoms up. Drink to forget that I'll drink. <laughs> There's no one to eavesdrop on from here. Perhaps I should try it. I drink to forget that I drink. Want a beer? <laughs> Bones up. Scotland Yard dogs. The man with the airlip. He was afraid. He ran upstairs. The man with a head. Let's could be my celebrate. <laughs> Cheers. Bombs up. Pour me a double. I'm going outside for a cigarette. He has a pass. I could steal it to gain entry.
complete job. You can get in. Cheers! Is the boss at his place? Yeah, he's waiting for you. A man. We should find a way to follow him. The door to the gambling room is there. It's not a gambling room, so get out of here. Luck is on my side. Bid up for a shilling. All in. Hey, what do you think you're doing? That's ah, private. It's Gamble my or get out. Day. Fools. Get snappy. I have to get across to the other side. Perhaps from there I can reach the guarded area. I have to create ah, a diversion. It's my lucky the day. Away from the Fools. Fools. Get snappy. Think faster. Luck is on my side. You loser. All in. On my side. Get out, fresh shit. Hold him. Ah, it's my lucky day. Fool's snappy. Think fast.